Welcome, students, staff, and faculty of Biola University to the 2018-2019 academic year and our fall convocation chapel. Please stand for our call to worship as we together respond with the words on the screen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Declare his glory among the nations. And now let's together declare our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. To whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. We have believed and come to know. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing for our opening prayer and musical worship. Well, in this year that we've designated the year of spirit and story in our chapel programs, would you please pray with me? Lord, we present ourselves to you this day, this new beginning. We know we can do nothing apart from you, Jesus, nothing that is life-giving, water flowing, light shining, and fruit bearing. Where else would we go, Lord? We present our stories to you. Each one of us are novellas that you are writing. Each one of us words that you have spoken into existence. Each one characters seeking character, minor plots seeking the major story. For Heavenly Father, we do not know who we are until we know of which story we are a part. So Spirit, this year, tell us again the story of the creation of the world out of nothing but your love, of the world spoken into being, the explosion of life and color and beauty, and how very, very good it was that our hearts may burn within us. Spirit, tell us the story of the calling of Abraham and the people of God, plucked from obscurity, chosen from anonymity, to be a blessing to all the nations, that our hearts may burn within us. Spirit, tell us again the story of freedom, of Exodus, the story of Moses, the freedom for pharaonic world of bondage and injustice and idolatry, and the great wall of water drawn back like a veil for all to see the new way forward. Tell us the story again that our hearts may burn within us. Spirit, tell us a story of our own resistance to love, from Adam and Eve to Cain, from Babel through Babylon all the way to Barabbas. Because there is now no condemnation, we can hear it. Let it humble us that our hearts may burn within us. And Jesus, walk with us to Emmaus. We sometimes have little faith. And tell us the story from Moses to Calvary of how the Christ must suffer for our redemption. And may the veils fall from our eyes as the bread is broken and we see you anew, alive, resurrected, reigning. And like the two disciples there that day, may our hearts burn within us. And Spirit, illuminate us for the story of your coming, of your arrival like fire spreading from Jew to Gentile, grafting many of us into the root of Jesse as the blessing to us and to all the nations rushes out like streams of living water. This year we offer you our stories to be part of the one great story. A thousand different streams flowing into the river of life, each one but a rivulet but gathering force together to water the world as you direct the flows and eddies of our lives. Make us each clean and supple as water to the currents of your loving hand. So Spirit, storify us that we may glorify you and speak of the acts of the Holy Spirit in us to one another that our hearts may burn within us with the fire of the Holy Spirit. We pray these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing.
sings my soul, my Savior God. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great Thou art. Thank you. Please be seated. Welcome. Summer is over. And the fall 2018 semester has begun, and we are so ready. It is with great anticipation that we are starting another year, year 111 for us at Bio University. So we gather together in the name of the Lord, and we welcome him here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, maybe a little clapping would be great for semester. Yeah, for the new year, right? Wow. And uh, this is actually, we've gathered many times here in Chase Gymnasium for this convocation, but this is the first time we've sort of had air conditioning. Yeah. Sort of. So cool. Literally. Um, it could be cooler. Half the, half the units are working up there, and in nine days, all of them will be working, so we are well on our way to the coolest gym in Orange County, so L.A. County, Sorry. Hey, so for you students and faculty and staff who are returning to Biola, we missed you desperately. Welcome back. Um, we're so glad that you've returned for another year. It's going to be an amazing year. And to those who are new to, to our community, we're going to welcome you a little bit more formally uh, in just a few minutes. But I'd like to ask all of our new faculty and new students to stand up so we can give it up for you. Welcome. In this 2018-19 uh, academic year, we have uh, much to anticipate and much to be thankful for. Uh, our, our 
campus has had this beautification uh, refurbishment this past summer. If not, you haven't seen it yet, I invite you to um, go to Calvary Chapel and even join us on Friday morning for a sacred arts and worship service and view the exhibit of the, uh, of the artists, uh, Peter Brandis, Maya Lisa Engelhardt at the Green Art Gallery, um, these two dear artists from Denmark who have done the refurbishing of Calvary Chapel. It is an amazing place. Uh, we've launched our ninth school, School of Cinema Media Arts, this summer. Um, <laughs> building on the foundation that we have had for decades, um, dating back, making an influence uh, in the world of media broadcast and, um, and certainly in Hollywood. We have some sharp, new, eager faculty joining the ranks of our existing faculty. We are raising money for a new building that will be underway, hopefully, uh, in the foreseeable future. We are in the search process for our founding dean for the School of Cinema Media Arts. Uh, uh, film majors who are here, uh, your future is premier. So, premier, I thought that would actually... <laughs> something. Continuing all of our schools with just an incredible passion um, to be exemplary and strive to high levels of excellence in all that we do. Um, we have an, just a, a remarkable faculty at Bible University, uh, remarkable leaders and deans of these schools. So we'll, you'll hear about more of that, about that in a few minutes from our provost. Continuing to build on the strength of our science, technology, um, health programs. We have, uh, this will be the first year we fully occupied for the entire year our uh, Alton and Lydia Lim Center for Science, Technology, and Health. And, yeah, so that's a, a great things underway there. We actually are welcoming nine, nine new faculty to this school, a new associate dean, and continuing to deepen the quality of scholarship and research and teaching of the sciences with a Christian worldview. Uh, sadly, this summer, less than two weeks before he was to turn 100, um, the namesake of this building Alton Lim passed away, and uh, how thankful we are for his life and legacy of this man and his late wife, Lydia, and the Christian commitment of the Lim family. There's another moment of shared grief for us as a Biola community this summer uh, with the death of one of our students, Ashley Osborne. Uh, Ashley came to Biola last year. She was pursuing her degree in early childhood education. She had been battling with cancer. Uh, those in this community who knew her would attest to her kind spirit, and we take comfort in the fact that Ashley's with Jesus now. So for those of you who are new to this campus, you are joining a 110-year tradition, a Bible university, this institution, Christ-centered, biblically faithful in our convictions. The conviction of Bible university is seen in the biblical integration that permeates our academic disciplines. It's seen in the discipleship that happens among our faculty, staff, and students. It's seen in the co-curricular programs that form us spiritually and the community of grace-filled students who courageously pursue their calling to make a difference in this world for the cause of Christ. This is gonna be a good year. I was telling the incoming students, I had the vibe the other day, that this is gonna be a good year. Great things are going to be happening. We're going to worship together. We're going to gather together. We're going to grow together. We're going to wrestle through complicated ideas together. We're going to pray for one another in good times and in difficult times. We're going to share our lives through study and worship and the enjoyment of God's good world and his true word. So may the Lord's favor and anointing and protection be upon Biola University as we begin the 2018-2019 academic year. Now please join me in welcoming our provost and senior vice president, Dr. Deborah Taylor. Good morning. It's so great to see a full gym. We're so happy you guys are all here. So um, as provost, I'm pleased to present to you today the, and to the whole community a new number of appointments to our faculty. We have hired 18 full-time faculty for one-year appointments, a brand new dean, and a new associate dean. Would all of those people who I am talking about please stand? Oh, they're together. <laughs> Thank you. If you'd like to stand, you can keep standing. If you'd rather sit down, you can. All right. 
These distinguished and committed men and women come to us from a variety of educational backgrounds, professional training, and service from all around the globe. We are so excited about the influence and expertise that each of them will bring to our academic programs in 14 distinct areas, art, biological sciences, business, chemistry, physics, engineering, entertainment producing, education, history, interactive media and game design, intercultural studies, math and computer science, nursing, public relations, speech and language pathology, and the Tory Honors Institute. So we are very thrilled to have all of you with us and contributing to our programs. Each of these men and women have followed the call of the Lord to come to Biola in order to equip you students and to help you understand the light of God's truth and how you can make a difference in the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm thankful for their dedication. I'm thankful for their preparation. I'm grateful for their professional accomplishments and that they responded to the call of God to come to Biola University and bring their wisdom, their knowledge, their search for biblical truth, the way that they model biblical li living and scholarship and service to you as students. I also can't go without expressing my appreciation to our returning faculty, an incredibly wise group of scholars who are constantly preparing dynamic classes for the students. They're seeking new ways to integrate their faith and new kinds of scholarship that they contribute to the academy. And as you know, they develop relationships with you that go far outside of the classroom. So I'm so honored to serve them and profoundly grateful for the sacrificial dedication they have to our students. And as President Corey just mentioned, we are thrilled to have the new School of Cinema and Media Arts, our ninth school. This launched officially on July 1st, and we plan to usher in a new renaissance in media arts here at Biola University. We want to become the premier global media school, developing the most creative scholarly endeavors and theological principles and practices for the creation of media. Our prayer is that through the power of the Spirit of God, whose love creates and sustains all good work, our faculty will inspire these students to become the most outstanding storytellers, industry leaders, scholars, and culture creators who will enliven and engage and inspire the world in ways that bring meaning and hope. This vision of having a new school with a biblical worldview, and we're planning by 2020 to double our enrollment. We're aiming for 700 students in this new school, the construction of a gorgeous new building, expanded programs in about 14 new areas, and then partnerships with people around the world. So you're all invited today. We're having a celebration and a prayer time to launch this new school officially in this new school year at 4.30 p.m. on the Lim Center walkway. I hope I'll see you there. I would now like to welcome our new Student Government Association President, Sierra McCoy, and Vice President Katie Davis to present the new students. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's just really awesome to be able to see the students that we've been praying for with excitement. Um, and just getting ready to serve you guys is such a privilege this year. So, President Corey, it is my honor to present you this morning with our new students for fall 2018. It is my privilege to serve in the 2018-2019 year as the undergraduate SGA president. Senior Vice President Katie Davis and I, along with the rest of the student leadership team, pledge to serve and represent our fellow students faithfully and honestly toward the building up of the Biola community. President Corey, this group of 1,175 incoming undergraduates is comprised of freshmen, transfer students, and post-traditional students. In addition, this fall we welcome nearly 600 new graduate students into our master's and doctoral degree programs. Together, these new graduate and un undergraduate men and women from 40 countries and 45 states and U.S. territories join the ranks of thousands more returning students to Biola. Together, we, the student body of Biola University, are proud to continue the Christ-centered tradition of this great institution. And now, please welcome Vice President for Student Development, Mr. Andre Stevens. Good morning, uh, President Corey. Before you today, 
are the young men and women who make up the incoming class of 2018. Many of them are Y2K kids. Do the math. Uh, they are first-time freshmen as well as seasoned transfer graduate and post-traditional students, residential students who are uh, far from home as well as commuter students who are just a short drive away. We have global students and ethnically diverse students. We have first-generation students who have overcome tremendous obstacles and will be the first in their family to graduate from college. We have homeschooled and private school and public school students. We have athletes and artists, writers, musicians, pastors, missionaries, filmmakers, social workers, and future business owners among us. We have older students and married students. Some are sharing a room with a roommate for the very first time. Some are the only Christian witness in their family. And I wanna give a special welcome to several dozen military veterans who are enrolling at Biola this fall. These students have chosen Biola not because they want to pursue promises and principles, but because they want to pursue God found in the person of Jesus Christ. With nearly 20 million students enrolling in college this fall, these students are different. They have not arrived, but, but by enrolling at Biola, they have declared that they have received the love of Jesus Christ into their hearts and have an earnest desire to impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. I present these new students to you, President Corey, as they begin their university journey of intellectual and spiritual growth. I am confident that he who began a good work in them will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. So new faculty, new students, I'd like you to stand one more time as I give you this charge. Biola Bio University's vision is to be an exemplary Christian university characterized as a community abiding in truth, abounding in grace, and compelled by Christ's love to make a difference as a redemptive voice in a changing world. We are pleased this day to invite you, new students and new faculty, into this community. You join a fellowship of Biolans who have responded to God's call, like them, you long to have your hearts and minds transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. With that love, you will then go and serve your neighbor. I charge you as new members of this community to be faithful to God, letting his love and power minister courage and grace to your callings. I urge you to offer your minds to be deepened and transformed by a knowledge that abounds with God's love and to pay close attention to the Spirit's work in your heart and God's truth, seeking foremost to know God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent, that the fruit of the vine may grow in all your words and deeds. And as these new members of our community are standing, those who are not standing, if you could just like extend a hand their way as I pray a blessing over them. So to you new faculty and new students of Biola, May the peace of Christ be over you to shelter you, under you to uphold you, about you to protect you, behind you to direct you, and ever with you to save you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's welcome one more time the new members of Bible University community. Please be seated as Professor Dean Yamada comes to read our scripture this morning. James chapter 2, verses 12 through 17. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? <clears throat> Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well-fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead.
The Word of God. Lots of energy in here. I'm so ready for this summer to end, for us to be together today. If I were to judge by recent Facebook posting from one of you, there is a good vibe uh, as we begin the semester. Here's a pre-med freshman posting after making the decision to come to Biola. Biola bound. It would take hours to delve into the intricacies of this difficult decision. I could easily write an essay about it. In fact, I have. It's 18 pages. I will give you the abstract. At Biola, the presence of the Holy Spirit is palpable. Biola cultivates spiritual, intellectual, social, and professional growth. The students are deep, accepting, and authentic. Professors like Dr. Ferguson, Dr. Veramini, and Dr. Havunjian showed me that scientific progress can be intertwined with robust faith. The academics are refreshingly rigorous. The Lord orchestrated countless repetitive divine appointments that rocked me to the core. I surrendered this decision to the Lord. A week ago, I was in a place of total submission. He dismantled my logistical perspective and caused me to register the supremacy of his plan. I am called. A freshman here at Biola. What I hear in the voice of the student is his desire to live an authentic life that's all in for Christ. And that's us, all in academically, all in relationally, all in spiritually, all in to make the most of your years at Biola. And as we begin this year, let's begin that way, all in as disciples of Jesus, and more than anything, what inhibits us from being all in is when our faith and our works are not aligned. Passage Professor Yamada read from the book of James gets to the point, if a brother or sister is poorly clothed, lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. I think I've read more books this summer than I've read in any summer since I've been here at Biola. It helped that the summer started a month earlier with graduation at the beginning of May and not at the end. Two of the books that really um, stirred me to see what happens when faith and works are not aligned. One was a spiritual biography of the abolitionist Frederick Douglass called America's Prophet. The other was perhaps the final book to be written by John Perkins, a giant of the faith who speaks clearly and prophetically and biblically in his book, Dream With Me. And by the way, John Perkins will be the recipient this year of Biola's Charles Colson Award for Conviction and Courage. Amen. And it will be given to this 88-year-old from Mississippi at the opening of our 2019 Student Congress on Racial Reconciliation be there in February. In America's Prophet, I read how Frederick Douglass viewed so many Christians as unable to, to reconcile their faith with their works as it related to slaveholding in America. Frederick Douglass saw this duplicity not as, as an outsider, but he saw it as a slave and he saw it as a, as a follower of Jesus. Here's how he's described so you have a context of what he believed. Douglas embraced a distinctly evangelical kind of Christianity with its heavy emphasis on salvation through Christ's death and resurrection and on the centrality of the Bible as authoritative in the life of a believer. Frederick found liberating truth in the Christian gospel as a sinner and a slave. And in time, as he unleashed his prophetic voice, Frederick turned continually to the Christian faith he first embraced as a child. For he discerned in its precepts when rightly understood a powerful witness against slavery, hypocrisy, and oppression. And he saw in his life how over and over and over again how faithful followers of Jesus ignored the biblical injunction to help the suffering, suffering and oppressed. And for his entire life, Douglas nurtured his faith in tension, the tension between his assurance of the truth of Christianity and his frustration with how most Americans practiced it. As followers of Jesus, we need to consider that skeptics, as well as people of faith, are scrutinizing us, watching to see whether or not our faith is lived out. And if we claim to be children of God, many eyes are observing whether our walk matches our talk to use an overworn platitude. And what they observe will be either a sincerity that is alluring 
or a hypocrisy that is repelling. When people of God are more concerned with their image than with his glory, Jesus calls that hypocrisy. And nothing invalidates our gospel witness more than when we apply our faith in some areas of our life and we ignore our faith in other areas of our life. More than ever, people want to know that the gospel is good. Its truthfulness matters, but so does its goodness. And when our proclamation of truth does not sync with our demonstration of grace, we've got a problem. Again, the passage from James, if a brother or sister is poorly clothed, lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? In James' world, the poor had no other hope than the charity of their neighbors. There were no safety nets back then, no food stamps, no welfare state, no public housing. In his book, Dream With Me, John Perkins sees some of the same inconsistencies when Christians don't live out their faith and how they live and worship together. Here's what he said. We can pass lofty-sounding laws and give speeches about tolerance all day long. We can boast about how we have black or white Native American or Persian friends, but as long as we do not worship together, it's only talk. How can we expect God to break down walls and be present among us when we will not do the same and be present among one another? You know how Douglas and Perkins responded. It's a model for us. They didn't become cynical. And walk away from the faith because they saw in others a gospel that was spoken, but a gospel that was not lived. They didn't blame everything on broken systems. What they did was they rolled up their sleeves and they worked towards change. Douglas in the 1800s, Perkins in the 1900s, and today. For Frederick Douglass, his faith inspired him to, to care for the intellectual and spiritual well-being of slaves by helping to start a Sabbath school so they could learn to read and read God's word. For John Perkins, his faith inspired him to launch after-school tutoring summer camps, art camps, good news Bible clubs, and to provide affordable housing for low-income families and to help those who are single mothers. And he did not do this to gain fame for his name. He did this because he loved Jesus. And he loved Jesus so much he could not help but live a life that made that love contagious. I'm an old man, he said. And this is one of my dreams, that my descendants will one day live in a land where people are quick to confess their wrongdoing and forgive the wrongdoing of others and are eager to, eager to build something beautiful together. Students and all of us, living out your faith with humility is the antidote to hypocrisy. It doesn't mean we strive to live to be perfect but it means we strive to live to be obedient. The heroes we need to hold high at Biola are those who lived obediently for Christ. Heroes who from their Jesus love then, love their neighbor and their enemy as themselves. We need to hold high those women and men throughout the centuries who stood strong and courageous as Christ's followers, especially when their stand was countercultural. As the redeemed in Christ, we need to do something about that which is wrong or unjust and not just speak about it. As James reminds us, telling someone, go in peace and be warmed, doesn't mean squat <laughs> unless we give her some food and something warm to wear. As I read these books this summer, I wondered what I would have done if I was a young Christian in Georgia in the 1860s. Would I have cared for the slaves in my community? Would I have spoken out in their defense and done all within my powers to help them with reading and health care and even smuggling them onto the Underground Railroad toward their freedom? I wonder what I would have done if I was a young Christian man in Mississippi in the 1960s. Would I have spoken out for the rights of all people to eat at the same counter, drink at the same water fountains, use the same toilets, sit on the same bus seats, and be educated at the same schools? You know, I don't think I, I would have been a vicious person, but I wonder if I would have been an indifferent person. Indifference, not hate, 
Ellie Wiesel says, is the opposite of love. So here we are, 6,000 strong at Biola University, today's rising generation of Christians. And you know what my prayer is for us? It's that the Holy Spirit makes us aware of our blind spots. It's for our radical faith in Christ to shatter our indifferences. It's for Biola to be a place where we confess our wrongdoing and forgive the wrongdoing of others. Faith becomes action not as a heartless duty, but as a profound act of worship. And the more you fall in love with Jesus, the more you're going to be compelled to live your faith in selfless service to others. And your compassion will deepen and it will widen as your love for Christ grows. So keep craving Christ. And the result will be his love and convictions evident in all your life. My prayer is that the spirit of the living God would resuscitate in us a radical Christian love that calls us off our soapboxes and into the world to serve with Jesus-sized compassion. My prayer is that your words and lives would be so authentically similar that people will want to surrender to the Christ you proclaim. My prayer is for a spirit of unity to serve the overlooked of our university and the neglected of our world in Jesus' name. Open our eyes, Lord, is my prayer. To see the overlooked of Biola, the neglected of Los Angeles, of America, of the world, to those suffering, to those who don't know Christ. My prayer is that we put some tread on our faith and we do something. September 19th, not long from now, we're going to have an involvement fair. For you students especially, it's a place for you to get plugged in, to put your faith to work. Uh, it's going to be up and down outside the main thoroughfare out there. And, you know, there was a time up until, I don't know, about 30 years ago when Biola required Christian service for all students. And it's voluntary now, but why can't we all be rolling up our sleeves and involved in service, living out the goodness of the gospel for others. And one way we do this, a simple way, is by truly loving those you meet here, even those with different stories. Loving them enough to invite them into your life and to walk with them in theirs. May what I do as a Christian never fall into the category of hypocrisy or indifference or just wanting to be with those who are like me. May it never be more about me than Jesus. May I pray with earnestness that I be contrite enough to know when my words are removed far from my deeds. May I never be a stench to the name of Jesus by parading my words while trampling over the needy. May I never tout the gospel yet neglect to share it with those who don't know Christ as their savior. May I never proclaim the Bible as the word of God and neglect to read it expectantly and faithfully. May I never claim to be pro-life and yet be indifferent to the plight of the unborn or the disabled or the persecuted church worldwide. May I never claim to be committed to the well-being of children and yet be indifferent to human trafficking and sexual slavery around the globe. May I never claim that all are made in God's image and yet tolerate anti-Semitism or turn a blind eye to racism. More and more followers of Jesus are defined right or wrong, by a, car a compartmentalized faith. More and more, we need to be seen as living as full, though broken, all-in Christians. More and more, we must accept that bearing the name Christian puts us on display. And if we claim the name of Jesus, we will be scrutinized. And that means when we cease to proclaim Christ in how we live our faith, we profane Christ to those who observe our faith. Brother, sister, is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? It's easier to live happily in our Christian words than to roll up our sleeves and serve others, whether in Hope Hall or Skid Row or Mozambique. Maybe it's how you overlook that person in your class struggling to fit in. 
Maybe it's when you talk about reconciliation in biblical terms, but don't build genuine relationships with those whose families and cultures are different than yours. Like Jesus, we are called to enter each other's stories so that, Philippians 2, in humility we value others above ourselves, not looking to our own interests, but each to the interest of others. You know, we're a university, and we're all about, like, arguing rigorously from truth the best ideas, but ideas in and of themselves are not enough. We need not only to think biblically, Biola, we need to love biblically. I talked with Professor Susan Lim Saturday, history professor, and she shared with me how she got a list of every incoming student's name and prayed fervently this summer by each of you Name by name by name. This is loving biblically. I read this summer New Testament professor uh, Matt Williams' new book, A Reflection on the Gospel of John, that unpacks the stories of his Biola students who have been healed and restored by encountering the living Christ. Stories of the work of the Holy Spirit transforming broken lives and how we walk through each other's stories with one another, as Professor Williams and many others have. Spirit and story. It's this year's chapel theme, focusing on stories of Scripture and how through these and our stories, the Holy Spirit is powerfully revealing the glory of God. And we pray this year that the Spirit will empower us to see and to receive and to follow Christ. And that high and holy calling, friends, is a low and humble calling As we decrease, Christ is increased. And students, I believe America and even the world is at the doorstep of another great awakening that will be defined by repentance and resolute faith and radical love if we only allow the power of the Holy Spirit here at Biola to work in and through us, if we only believe what the Spirit of God will do in our year, in your generation, students. There's nothing that I want more than for Biola to be filled with Jesus-loving students on their knees pleading with the Spirit to empower them to dream of what can be done with a surrendered generation, to open God's word and pray that the truths of Scripture would be so ingrained on our hearts that our faith will be unshaken. Students, I believe in the coming years you'll be part of an historical breakthrough as you live as all in for Christ as you take up the call for justice and reconciliation and evangelism for your generation. So don't squander these years that you're here. Live into them with all that you have. And may it be said of your generation, they lived out their faith in the days God gave them to live. That's all he asks of you. God bless you and welcome to Biola University. Please stand for the benediction. Lord God, you are our almighty and everlasting Father, and you are the one who have brought us to this new year. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, that we may not be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purposes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Faculty, please remain standing. Audience, you may be seated and remain seated for the recessional until all the faculty have left the gym.